Hi, my name is Kevin Smith and I'm an Agilent Applications Engineer. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the digital channels on an Agilent MSOX 2000 or 3000 series oscilloscope. One key point is that these MSO digital channels are timing only channels. They sample asynchronously to the signal. This is not a state analyzer like you would find on a true logic analyzer. To start, we always want to do a default setup. This puts the scope into a known, uh, known good state. I've already got um, eight digital channels connected uh, to the digital inputs on my scope. Specifically, I'm looking at a 3000X right here. I'm going to auto scale them, and it finds my signals. Okay, I've got D0 through D7 connected on my 3000 series scope. On the 3000, there are 16 digital channels. On the 2000, however, there are only eight digital channels. The first thing I'll point out is that the highs are shown in green, transitioning are shown in yellow, and lows, or zeros, are shown in bl blue. To resize my signals, I can hit the digital uh, hard key, and then the leftmost soft key lets me resize them. You'll notice that one of, that one of the channels is in red. This, in, this is trying to tell me that I can use the, um, uh, these two digital knobs, or the knobs in the uh, extra section, okay? And if I move the knob, spin the knob, it, select, it moves which waveform is selected in red. And I can now use the small, the lower knob to move the signal position on screen. Okay. Also notice that there is an activity indicator. This indicates that uh, D0 through D7 are transitioning. If I wanted to turn on an extra digital channel, I would click this, the second most soft key from the left. Okay, and I have now turned on D15. There's no activity on D15, so it's just a flat line. Notice that the sample rate did not decrease. Okay, so if I wanted to turn on D14, I would use the selector knob, get to D14, and I believe pushing it should select it, or I can turn it on here. I don't want these channels on though. There's no activity, so let's turn them off. Okay, I can turn them on in groups, however. We can now see that they're all on. Okay. Um, I can also change the thresholds on a per eight channel or per pod basis. I have TTL, CMOS, ECL, and user. User lets me select user lets me select the threshold in 10 millivolt increments. Okay. If I wanted to assign some channels to a bus, I have two bus selections, bus 1 and bus 2. All right. I can switch between uh, assigning to, to a bus with the selector knob. Okay. Um, or I can add them all. So pretty much bus 1 has all 15 channels. I don't want all 15 channels. I just want D0 through D7 because that's all I've got going on here today. I can also change the base to hex or binary. We'll leave it in hex. With the large time per division knob, I can go to a slower time base and actually see the bus values. If I want to trigger on a specific bus value, all right, the, um, the trigger type defaults to edge. And of course, I have um, rising, falling, alternating, either. And I can do any of the digital channels or any of the analog channels. It defaulted to D7. But if I wanted to go to a parallel pattern or a bus value, all right, we need to go there to pattern. There we go. And I have some various choices. Entered, less than, greater than, the bus value. Timeout, in range, out of range. And of course, that'll work across any of the channels. 
or all the channels at once, rather. Okay. If I go to bus one, okay, I can now enter some bus value in. For example, I happen to know that I have a seven on here. So I go to um, my hex value, spin that, spin the knob till I get to A. Go to the previous digit, next digit, and I want to select A7. All right, now notice I'm always I'm going to rock solid trigger A7. I can also put this into normal triggered mode from the mode coupling hard key. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of bus values displayed. Hey, that's great. I can save these off under the save utility hard key. If I put in a USB stick, I would want to select format, ask EXY, adjust settings um, as needed, name it, save it to a USB stick. But this isn't maybe the most useful tool. Um, with the 3000 series scope in the advanced math package, there is a logic or digital chart operator. Okay, This is an add-on feature. It's a license key enabled. You'll see that I have a state mode and a timing mode. Okay, State mode is still not a true state mode, but I have to assign a clock from one of the unused digital channels Okay, uh, with a rising, falling, or either edge. The chart will then be displayed as if it were sampled in state mode. It is not sampled in state mode, it's still sampled asynchronously, but the chart is displayed as if it were acquired in state mode against the clock. Since I don't have a clock to use on this particular signal, we're going to go, I'll show you this in timing mode. There we go. Almost. Very good. I can now set um, <clears throat> uh, units per code, uh, apply some offset, change the units. Now that I have the math soft key selected, or hard key selected still, I can actually change the scale of this, wave, of this math waveform. We're going to go to a slower time per division scale. We're going to make this waveform a little smaller. I can move it up a little if I want. And I can see that this that this is an 8-bit DAC spitting out a sine wave. And that's this that's the short version. And that's pretty much all of it. Thank you for your attention.